I want to ask you about your, your, your running mate. Um, I don't know if you saw, well, I saw the day that a news report broke that uh, Amy Klobuchar was being vetted and a lot of people on social media, they're not too happy about that. And um, it's because they want your running mate to be a black woman. I don't know if you saw the op-ed in the Washington Post by some of the leading black women voices in this country and they feel since black women are such a loyal voting block and black people saved your political life in the primaries this year. They have things they want from you and one of them is a black woman running mate. What, what do you say to them? What I say to them is that I'm not acknowledging anybody who is being considered, but I guarantee you there are multiple black women being considered. Multiple. Well, you know, Thanks give so much. That's really our time. I apologize. You can't do that to black media. You I can't do that to white media and black media because my wife has to go on at six o'clock. Okay. Oh, uh oh, I'm in trouble. Listen, you got to come see us when you come to New York, VP Biden. I a, will. It's a long way until November. We got more questions. You got more okay. questions, but I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump. And you ain't black. It don't have nothing to do with Trump. It has to do with the fact <laughs> You that said what? <laughs> I'm, li I'm literally speechless. If you're a black person and you don't vote for Joe Biden, then you're not really black, man. <laughs> this, this coming from the newly self-anointed expert in all things race, the one, the only, the privileged... Delaware's own Joe Biden. In fact, it's even worse than that. I don't know if you caught it. Biden said that if you're even having a hard time, in his words, figuring out whether to support him or Trump, <laughs> you ain't black. Now, as of today, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Biden is now telling black people what qualifies them as actually being black. And that's voting for him. How convenient. We're going to take a look at the latest absurdity coming out of the mouth of Joe Biden. How it's not only alienating black voters, but actually increasing support for the one and only Donald Trump. You're going to absolutely love it. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. I hope you're having a wonderful start to your weekend. If this is your first time here on this channel and you're looking for a daily white pill of encouragement to help you counter all the ridiculous nonsense the fake news that's being spewed out of air by the corporatist globalist media. You found your oasis here. We post two videos a day analyzing current events and lies some super awesome conservative trends that you can live in the present in light of even better things to come. So make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. You're going to love being a regular part of this channel and interacting with this wonderful network of conservatives from all over the world. They are simply the best and this is your new home. So let's start off with our video chat question for the day. Let's be blunt. Do you believe Democrats will nominate someone else other than Joe Biden? Let us know in the comments section below. Do you believe that Joe Biden will be rejected and the Dems will find someone else? Because to be honest with you, if you're a Trump supporter, Biden is the gift that just keeps on giving. And we're going to see how this latest Biden gaffe is really turning out to be a real political disaster. But first, before you do anything else, Make sure to click on the link below and check out the awesome video that we put together just for you featuring our brand new Turley Talks Insiders Club. We are so thankful to all of you who've already signed up and you're going to love being a part of this massive group of conservatives from all over the world to network with directly. By becoming a member, you'll get more exclusive access to me and our journey together into this new conservative age that we're embarking on. Each week, you'll get a special deep dive video reserved solely for our insiders members about 45 to 60 minutes long you get access to our private facebook group that features conservatives from all over the world plus you'll get my monthly reading list to keep you updated on the best and most enriching information that's out there you get a number of really awesome bonus videos and you even get some totally awesome accessories some swag like our good old turley talks tumbler to drink your coffee in or whatever your grog of choice happens to be all for less than the price of a cup of coffee a day. So make sure to click on the link below and watch the video on the Turley Talkers Insiders Club. You get a fuller sense of what you'll be a part of. This offer to join for such a low price is for a limited time only. So click on that link. It'd be an absolute privilege to journey with you into this new conservative age together. 
All right, gang, let's dive right in here. Fresh off the latest revelations that he was central to the unmasking of former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn and the leaked audio tapes that reveal his blatant quid pro Joe with a former Ukrainian president giving out government funds in exchange for personal favors. And just after it was revealed that a Ukrainian court has named him a part of a criminal probe, Joe Biden and his fledgling campaign just got rocked once again, and once again by virtue of his own words, however unintelligible, coming out of his mouth. The occasion this time was an interview that Biden had on The Breakfast Club, which is a nationally broadcast morning talk show, popular primarily black audience. The interviewer is a fellow by the name of Charlemagne the God. I, I think I'm pronouncing it correctly. Charlemagne the God. And as I understand, it was a rather contentious uh, interview. Uh, certainly, uh, Biden got pressed far more by this interviewer than he would from anyone at CNN or MSNBC or the rest of the mainstream Marxist media, where they just toss him his little fluffball questions. And at one point, a Biden aide steps in and tries to end the interview. And the host gets pretty upset about that. And he says, hey, hey, you can't do that to black media. You know, whatever that means. But Biden insisted, you gotta go. Sorry, man, I gotta go. And they started chumming around, you know, bringing the interview to an amicable end. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, Biden makes this bizarre claim. And he actually said, as you heard, he actually said, I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, then you ain't black. <laughs> If you're even considering that there's a choice between Biden and me, <laughs> you ain't black. Now, can you even consider, can you even stretch your mind to remotely imagine what the media would be saying right now, right this very instant, if Trump said that exact same thing? I mean, can you, I mean, do you have brain cells that go that far? Obviously, Biden is getting some massive backlash on this, not from the media, uh, not the very least the Trump campaign. The Trump war room tweeted out that Biden's comments were utterly disgusting, which they were. Uh, what he said was not just fallacious. We'll get into that in a minute. But it was really uh, the most disgusting form of patronizing that comes out of this whole nonsensical cultural Marxist identity politics. And then, of course, perhaps the biggest blowback is coming from blacks. Uh, here's what Machine Gun Kelly tweeted out. I don't know what kind of level of comfort you have to attain to make a statement like Joe Biden did in this clip. Quite something and quite is spelled Q-W-H-I-T-E. She goes on. Whoever helped Biden with this particular interview flopped. You ain't black. will never bang coming from a white man's mouth. And particularly Joe Biden's mouth of all things. I know your forefathers decide on the racial categories, but you really have a nerve whether in jest or not. Here's another one. It wasn't just Joe Biden telling us when or not we are black enough. It was his abhorrent blanket statements about black people, poverty, and crime. Doesn't automatically equate to black issue. How insanely offensive that interview was. Stay independent, my friends. We could go on and on in terms of the backlash here, particularly on Twitter. So what should we make of all this besides this just being the latest embarrassing absurdity to come out of Biden's mouth? Well, at one level, what Biden did uh, is what we call a blatant uh, logical fallacy. What uh, he said was patently and obviously false, and she, he should be called out for it. And that's because he appealed to something called the identity fallacy. And the identity fallacy is committed when one's argument is evaluated based on their physical or social identities, such as their social class, their generation, their ethnic group, their race, their gender, their sexual orientation, alike. And the important point here is that an argument can be made, it can be fully valid, irrespective of one's identity, right? So in this case, in this case, a black person can most certainly defend through valid argumentation the, legit the legitimacy of, again, remember, just considering Trump over Biden. A black person can make a thoroughgoing, legitimate argument for considering Trump over Biden that is valid irrespective of whether or not one is black. 
So to turn around and say that no such argument can be made because one is black, which is the implication, the inverse of Biden's claim, that if one was making that argument, they couldn't really be black. That's a blatantly fallacious statement. It's false. And for a cultural Marxist media uh, who's so supposedly so interested in facts, who's so interested in the rationality and science and the like, they should be calling Biden out on this remark in a manner comparable to the way they enjoy calling out Trump. But of course, I wouldn't hold my breath and I wouldn't hold my breath because this is precisely the kind of illogic, the kind of nonsense we get coming out of cultural Marxism. And we've talked about this on a number of occasions in a number of other videos. Cultural Marxism is technically known as emancipatory politics. And emancipatory politics is a globalist inspired political idea that re-envisions the state as a grand liberator of people groups who are considered to have been otherwise disenfranchised from the democratic political process. So what emancipatory politics does is it views societies and races and genders in light of power discrepancies, where a dominant identity or culture that's usually designated as white, or male, or, or Western, disenfranchises and discriminates against minority identities and cultures. And the key here is that this is forever the permanent state of society unless or until cultural Marxist liberals come to power. And that's where Biden is coming from here. This pathetically fallacious way of speaking, you know, this you, you can't be black, you ain't black comment, that comes directly out of this equally fallacious and discredited cultural Marxism. If all of life is about power discrepancies, most notably experienced by the black population, and if you're black, voting for the continuation of those discrepancies and injustices by voting for Trump, then you're voting against the best interests of your race now defined in cultural Marxist terms. So you're acting as if you're not one of them. You're acting against your own racial self-interest. Now, what's so interesting in all of this is that this nonsensical rhetoric is only fueling the rise of white populist backlash. And this was first observed by the Vanderbilt University scholar Carol Swain, who found that the identity politics are being pushed by the civil rights crowd was actually inadvertently awakening what she called a kind of new white nationalism. In other words, and this is, by the way, this is coming from her study that was published back in 2002. She noticed that whites were becoming very concerned about the asymmetrical distribution and enforcement of civil rights based equalities where they were being, they felt like they were being discriminated against. In other words, if blacks get to vote their political interests, and Latinos get to vote their political interests, and Asians get to vote their political interests, and so on and so on and so on, then why on earth can't whites vote on behalf of their own political interests? That's what Carol Swain was calling the new white nationalism that was not so much motivated by overt racism. In fact, all indicators show that racism is at an all-time low today. It's not overt racism that's motivating the new white nationalism, as she calls it. It's rather being provoked by what more and more whites perceive as deliberate discrimination against them simply because they happen to be white. So needless to say that Biden has really stepped into it here, into a hornet's nest at least. On the one hand, his comments are getting a massive backlash from black voters who he's trying to woo. On the other hand, his comments are serving only to galvanize and solidify more Trump voters. So again, I think we can honestly say that when all is said and done, Joe Biden is the gift that just keeps on giving. Now, before you go, you will definitely want to check out my latest video I just uploaded on the GOP flipping Democratic City Council, two of them in Virginia. It's all part of the Republicans sweeping several elections throughout the week, the last couple of weeks, and signaling a rising red wave. I think you're going to really love it. So make sure to click on the link, and I will see you over there. God bless.